So, this past Sunday, it finally happened. The icon, the franchise of WCW, finally made his WWE debut. Sting is a part of the WWE family. What does this mean? What does it mean in real terms? Obviously in storyline terms. He got the authority uh, kicked out of power. I think, I believe, looking at it, we'll have a couple of weeks at least of uh, every week having a different general manager. On Raw and SmackDown this week, it was Daniel Bryan. Uh, on Raw, at least next week, it's the supposed return of the anonymous general manager, who actually was supposed to be Hornswoggle. So we'll see whether that plays out any next week. And who knows, who will take over? My initial thoughts were that perhaps Sting would be the new sheriff in town. Perhaps he would be the one in charge. Perhaps WWE does not want to do that uh, because it uh, may lessen the impact of having Sting in WWE. Uh, you know, after a few weeks, you you a lot of even big stars. You know, we get used to seeing them in WWE. It's not as if wow, this guy is in WWE now, like we've seen many years in the past. It's okay. Rick Woods in WWE. Sting is in WWE. Rick Flair, he's a world champion in WWE. You, you get used to it. Perhaps that's why. Why he actually um, went against the authority, well, that's a bit obvious. If you know the character of Sting, really, he compares, obviously, and he has had many, many uh, occasions of this against The Undertaker. The Undertaker is the conscience of WWE. How many times has that been said? literally hundreds of times on WWE programming. Sting was the conscience of WCW. So that is probably the reason why. In real terms, what does it mean, though, for Sting to be a part of WWE? Well, you know, I didn't watch all of Survivor Series. I watched um, most of it, decided to go to bed, but still couldn't sleep because I had that niggling feeling that just that feeling that Sting may have just appear. All the rumours, all the speculation were that he was going to make his debut. I couldn't sleep. I switched Survivor Series back on and obviously I saw a moment that I never thought I would see. One of wrestling's biggest superstars appearing in WWE. Now, obviously, the rumours and speculation of him joining WWE have gone on for more than 25 years. Even when I was a lot younger, in the late 1980s, the early 1990s, we do know that Sting was offered a contract by WWE on several occasions. That is public record. Sting has said that. WWE has said that. Vince McMahon himself has stated that he offered Sting numerous contracts. But, you know, every time his contract would come up or he would lose the title or something would happen, uh, it was always rumoured that it was because he was leaving to go to WWE, which obviously hasn't happened until very recently. Now, when it comes to, obviously, the business-wise, it's a huge deal for Sting. Uh, it's a great earner for him. He's in the video game, WWE 2K15. Uh, no, they're selling merchandise like T-shirts. Uh, they're selling Blu-ray Sting, Best of Sting DVD and Blu-ray. I would recommend, if you're a fan of Sting, watch it. I keep meaning to do a review of it, but I've not had the chance. But it's a really good uh, set if you're a real fan of it. And it keeps them relevant. And obviously 14 years after the demise of WCW, it stops him and his career being forgotten. It's one of the reasons why I've said before that I want the WWE Network to succeed. Whether you like the video library being a part of WWE or not, and all those video libraries being owned by the company, it's a great thing for wrestling history. At least a lot of this stuff is not being bought by WWE like so, like so many pieces of art, uh, uh, paintings and uh, you no know, art installations that you hear about that are getting sold at huge uh, auction houses like Sotheby's and uh, all these worldwide huge um, art fairs that get bought up by a private buyer and it goes into a locked, uh, secured room never to be laid eyes on by the general public for years and years. 
at least this stuff, a lot of it, like you said, on the Blu-rays, the DVDs, on the W Network, this stuff is at least has an opportunity to be seen, uh, to be remembered, uh, and to be still a part of history of professional wrestling. In fact, you know, I don't know whether people hear, and I keep going on about wrestling podcasts because I enjoy so many of them, but if you listen to the Jim Cornette experience over the last couple of weeks, he's uh, recounted the tale of saving, I believe he's selling a multi-disc set of it on his website, but Jim Cornette actually got phoned by a janitor at uh, a television station, I believe, in Met- some some of least around Memphis, Tennessee, and they were literally thrown out hours and hours of the wrestling footage that they had. They were the only ones that had this footage. The janitor, knowing that Jim Cornette may be interested in the footage, phoned them up. Saying, you know, they're dumping it, it's all in the skip outside. Jim Cornette raced down there, saved all that footage, saved it from disappearing into th- to really literally dirt. I don't know what they would do with the materials of it, but it would be literally destroyed, and Jim Cornette stopped it, which is, I said, so one of the th- great things about one of my wrestling idols of Sting, you know, with all his career is being saved on the W Network. It hasn't been bought by a private collector or some uh, somebody that sticks all the footage from WCW and ECW, etc. They all stick it away, or WWE puts it on some dusty shelf, uh, and it's only there for, see, the WWE owners, Vince McMahon, Triple H, or Stephanie, or their family's uh, enjoyment. Now, this is and also really, in my mind, the end of of WCW. That is what it is to me. You know, there has not been the um, the real passion for WCW. There has not been the the embrace of the WCW history by WWE fans as there has been for ECW. No reunion shows, no um, lots of spe- no specials on uh, the WWE n- uh, Network that really goes really passionate into this history. Obviously, there's the Monday Night Wars. As I said, there's footage on the DVDs, the Blu-rays, but there's not really been that m- so visceral reaction uh, for WCW and want of WCW footage and history to t- and discussion that there has been about ECW. Uh, and you know, in the 14 years later. I grew, like I said, I grew up watching WCW from the late 1980s when it started being shown uh, over here on ITV, which was one of the three, uh, well, I think it was one of the three, terrest- three or four terrestrial channels uh, in, here in the UK in those days. It was what got me hooked on American style of wrestling, and obviously very shortly before it, the British wrestling style went off TV. You know, it was certainly... Uh, a great thing to grow up watching, but you know, like I said it's gone 14 years later, and the really seeing Sting. Uh, I'm try- I was going to not do this analogy because I've I tried to do this video several times the last couple of days, but it's different problems. But I kept 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 getting interrupted. But you, to be honest, I'm just going to say it. The analogy that I have had stuck in my mind for the last several days regarding WCW is that Sting appearing in WWE is really the last couple of shovelfuls of dirt being put on and patted down onto the grave of World Championship Wrestling. Really, the wrestling world is taking one final look at the tombstone of WCW before wandering away into the wrestling future. That is the analogy that really has stuck with me over the last couple of days. Because, like I said, he was a franchise. He was the icon. He was WCW. I said it, you know, there's so many guys that crossed over, whatever ways and however many times they did it. So many of them crossed over. The Ric Flair's, the Lex Luger's, whatever. You know, I don't need to go and uh, go down that path of explaining. So many guys actually flipped over either way, whatever ways, whenever they did it, it doesn't really matter. But they did constantly throughout the years, even before the so-called Attitude Era, so before the so-called Monday Night Wars, 
it happened. You can understand it. It's a business, it's an industry. It'll happen. It happens all the time, different sports, different events. But, to be honest, thing, like we all know, it was the last uh, bastion of WCW. He was the very last one there. Right until after the end of WCW, when nobody was quite sure what would happen to WCW, he was still loyal to the brand. I'm sure he is still to this day. Uh, hopefully we'll get more interviews. Hopefully we'll get uh, more recollection from Sting as time goes on. In regards to WCW, the way it ended, he really has never been too vocal uh, in really sitting down and telling his true opinions regarding those times in WCW. So it really is, like I said, the very last of WCW. The shovelfuls of dirt are finally laid uh, onto the grave and WCW is finally, finally resting at peace. And that really was the, that was really the analogy that really stuck with me because Sting was WCW. Sting was the man that represented that brand. He... Amongst a few, and maybe that's a, that was a fault of WCW, no doubt about it, that was a fault of WCW, they did not make many big stars, Goldberg, Diamond Dallas, Page, they didn't really bring through that many stars, a lot more of them, the stars that came through in the, during the 90s and the, to the late 90s were former WWE guys, and a couple of, well, maybe obviously Scott, Scott Steiner, but none, Booker T, but very, very few numbers, when you, certainly when you compare it to WWE and other wrestling companies. So, it does mean a hell of a lot. It means a hell of a lot to the fans like myself, like I said, who have grown up watching WCW. Have followed Sting's career, obviously, in the months of speculation since he left Impact Wrestling, who have now signed the new television deal, as I said earlier, uh, a few several days ago now, uh, which is great for them. But, you know, Sting in WWE marks the end of an era, absolutely, without a doubt. It marks the end of an era for many, many wrestling fans, including myself. But, it's good because, you know, in one way it's a bad way, like you said, it really, really does mark the end of WCW. In my opinion, that is now, I always said, you know, the end of WCW would come when the likes of Sting would be in WWE, now everybody has been in WWE. And obviously they cannot go back to WCW, but it's also a bright future. Who will we see Sting competing against? He did a Scorpion Death Drop against Triple H. Uh, no, there's a possible match. Everybody's jumping on that one on social media. Uh, a lot of people are suggesting it'll be WrestleMania 31, Triple H versus Sting. That's a possibility. Uh, Vince McMahon did say for the, uh, to Triple H and Stephanie, no, we, I want you to sort it out, and you will sort it out come hell or high water, pretty much, you're going to sort this out. So it's possible it's going to be uh, Sting versus Triple H or Sting versus Cena. Who knows? What, who knows what WWE have in their plans? I know some people will uh, obviously, and they obviously do, complain about WWE supposedly planning already for WrestleMania 31. They plan out at least a year in advance. It's your biggest show of the year, of course you're going to plan out well in advance uh, the general basis of what you want to do, what you want to happen, the storylines you want to have for your big show. It's, uh, it's a genuine thing, it's obvious what you're going to do. It's the biggest show of the year, where they get the most buys, where they're going to get the most subscribers on the WWE Network, the most pay-per-view buys when, where you cannot get the WWE Network. It's obviously going to be something that WWE... Uh, are going to be building up, and hopefully, this ho this ending of the authorities' reign will not just leave an opening for Sting, and hopefully Sting will not be too far uh, gone from WWE. Hopefully, will be back sooner rather than later. Uh, obviously, the build up. Uh, I don't think we'll see him until the new year, possibly now, um, because obviously I think WWE will be shown really best of. Uh, around Christmas time due to the, the days of Christmas are this year but I hope that uh, WWE are really looking to shift their uh, product, shift um, what the WWE are do what the storylines and what's going on in WWE uh, which seems to be an indication certainly to me very quickly 
the indication to me what's in Raw. Uh, I'll be from what I've heard of uh, the taping of SmackDown introducing uh, the new look for Biggie Langston, Kofi Kingston, and Xavier Woods, uh, and a few different things with like Fandango and uh, you know a couple of things uh, going on there. I'm hoping that WWE is moving to change their product slightly because I think it would benefit and. You know, they don't need to necessarily wait until after WrestleMania to change things, which is the the traditional WWE way. They always seem to wait until after WrestleMania to change things. I don't think the I don't think they have to do it this year. Change things going into the new year it would be a breath of fresh air, allow new opportunities for WrestleMania 31. So really, I think it's going to be a good time for hopefully WWE. Hopefully the Raw's quality will pick up. But overall, I think yes. It's a great thing to see Sting in WWE. As I said, hopefully they'll handle him right. Hopefully they'll work together with him, present his character right. But I am really looking forward to seeing the future involvement of Sting in WWE.